Brittany with Brittany Hannon Real Estate. I'm a real estate agent, coach, and investor. And every week we do a weekly workshop where we talk about a different topic in real estate to help you move your business forward. It's every Monday at 1130 AM Pacific Standard Time. Consider this your invitation. Let's talk about creating a buyer's presentation. This is something that lots of you guys ask a lot about. And so We've talked about this before, but we need to just keep talking about it. So hopefully you guys have your computers with you because this is going to be a true workshop style. We're going to jump into command and actually show you how to create a buyer's presentation so that by the end of this, you will have a buyer's presentation ready to go. All right. So what are we talking about today? Let's break it down. So first off, we like to do to go big picture and then go more and more narrow. So we're going to talk about setting yourself up for success. What does that look like? What do you need to do? Then we're going to talk about how to get that appointment, command your buyer's presentation. This is where we're going to dive into command and actually create that for you. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about checklists because uh, if you know me, you know that I love the command checklist. And then we're going to talk about how to win. All right, so what is setting yourself up for success? What is the purpose of a buyer presentation? Now, this is where a lot of people get this wrong. So what is the purpose of a buyer presentation? Um, let me just tell you. <laughs> the purpose of the buyer presentation is to give your clients, uh, well, first, you wanna find out your buyer's motivation. Now. This is different from the pre-qualification. So when you're doing your pre-qualification, you're talking about how many home, how many bedrooms do you want? How many bathrooms do you want? Do you want a pool, a spa, upstairs, downstairs? What do you want? That's different from your buyer consultation. So you want to have that conversation. You want to talk to them about that, but that's going to be maybe a 10, 15 minute conversation to say, what is it that you want? How many people are going to be living in your home? That kind of thing. The purpose of the buyer presentation, the buyer consultation, I'll use those um, interchangeably, is to really find out the buyer's motivation. The reason for that is really, really important because as you're talking through your uh, buyer's motivation, you're going to be able to dig deep and find out what really drives them because this is a hard market to buy in. We are seeing lots of offers over asking price your clients are likely going to lose patience. They're likely going to say, this is not worth it to me. I don't want to do this anymore. Let's just wait until prices drop. Is that happening anytime soon? No. Let me just wait until interest rates come down by a lot. Is that happening anytime soon? No. We need to talk to our clients uh, and find out their motivation so that when they have these kind of comments, we can say, well, let's remember your motivation. Let's remember that you need to uh, get into that school district for your kids before school starts. So let's remember that you want to be able to have a place for grandma and grandpa to come and live, uh, you know, in your, in your casita, uh, in your backyard. Whatever is that motivation, you need to get to the heart of that so that you can speak to that when they run out of patience. Now, the other purpose of the buyer's consultation is to establish the expectations. This is where you're talking about the process. You're letting them know what they can expect of you and what you can expect of them. So you're going to be telling them, hey, this is a long process. This is going to be, um, you need to have patience. This is what the market looks like, all of that kind of stuff. And this also establishes you as the expert. That's another key thing for our buyer's pr uh, presentation consultation is to establish you as the expert. Because you are the expert, you are going to be providing a great service to them. But so often people think, well, I can just go and find a real estate agent down the street and they can help me because whoever, you know, whoever I meet at an open house or something like that, they can help me. The reality is, is that every agent is not created equally. We were just talking about this uh, earlier today, is that there are a lot of really bad agents out there, right? And unfortunately, I worked with some this weekend. Greg worked with some this weekend. There are a lot of really bad agents. We need to be able to set ourselves apart. The buyer's consultation is one of the ways we can do that. And then we want to explain the market. So regardless of what kind of market we're in, we need to talk to our clients and tell them what is the market like. So I have the first thing I want to bring up our guest speaker. 
special guest, Martin Rosenblum. Woo, he's our lender. Come on up here, Martin. And I wanna, um, I want you to explain the market very, very quickly in the elevator pitch. Explain the market. So what is the market today? We are in a very volatile market in terms of interest rates and inventory. And because of that, I think there's a lot of anxiety that's being created with buyers right now. And they're trying to just step out of the game a little bit, waiting for things to get better or improve. But realistically, we're in a market right now where the longer you do wait, and at such time that even if and when interest rates do improve, because inventory is still so low, and that is not going to improve, in my opinion, anytime soon. So realistically, as all these people are waiting for things to get better and waiting for interest rates to come down, at such time that they do, buyers are going to come out in droves, and there's going to be, with low inventory, even more offers being made on properties, and it's going to be even more difficult for buyers to get those offers accepted, or because housing prices are going to continue to go up because more offers are being presented, it's just going to create a problem, I think, down the line. So the market we're in right now, very challenging for buyers, but I think those who are in the market today are going to benefit hugely as opposed to those who are waiting and everybody coming out at the same time when rates drop which we don't know when's going to happen. So I agree. That's where we're at. Thank you. Okay. Sure. I'm going to bring you back up in a few minutes. So okay. um, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Martin is awesome. He is um, our lender, my preferred lender. So um, if you do have questions for him, I'll put his info in the chat later um, because we want to make sure that we are uh, giving, showing love to our, to our lenders. So the key that Martin is talking about here is that you have to understand the market and we have to understand supply and demand. Basic economics 101, this is what I talk about. I feel like every single day I have this conversation. <laughs> so what we talk about is when supply is low, inventory is low and demand is high because there are a lot of buyers who are coming to the market, uh, prices go up. And so when we are explaining that to our clients, we have to understand that at a basic level. We have to understand that that if supply and inventory is low, which we know inventory is low right now and demand is high and only getting higher because of what Martin's talking about. As soon as if when interest rates do drop, buyers are gonna flood the market and now prices are gonna go up because we don't see inventory going up at the rate that there are gonna be buyers coming up. So prices are gonna go up, your clients are gonna be priced out of their preferred market. And so you have to explain this to them and that goes back to, to their motivation. So if we're saying uh, they want to move and they want to get into their new house and they want to get in by the fall, we need to explain to them, yes, we want to get you in by the fall, but if we want to get you in there, we need to start now. And the reason for that is this supply and demand. If interest rates change, if interest rates drop and more buyers come or the summer comes and a lot more buyers come to the market, whatever it is, more buyers coming to the market means those prices go up. And so that is part of the reason for our buyer's presentation. It establishes you as the expert and you can now go and comfortably and easily ask for that buyer's representation agreement. We're not going to talk about that, but that's basically, we want to get to that point. You all should be asking for that buyer's representation agreement to be signed. And if they're going to be, your clients are going to be much more likely to sign this after you do this buyer's consultation, because you've established yourself now as the expert, you've provided value to them. And you want to make sure that you are uh, showing them how and when to sign. So I always do this via Zoom, and then I do it through DocuSign, because I want my clients to understand how to use DocuSign. So a little pro tip for you there. Okay, so let's keep going. How do we get the appointment? And this is uh, another a uh, place where I'm going to have Martin jump in here. So getting the appointment. So this is before we do the buyer's consultation, we're going to establish rapport. So whatever that looks like, what does that mean to you over the phone, in person, however you're uh, establishing rapport, you're building that relationship. We always talk about the fact that real estate is a relationship business. Um, we talk in uh, some of our conferences at KW that real estate is a contact sport. You have to be in contact with your people. So you have to establish that rapport in one way or another. Is it an, at an open house? Is it at a coffee shop? Is it at their house? Is it over Zoom? Is it in your office? 
What is it to establish that rapport to be able to build that connection? Now, this can look like establishing yourself as the expert too, but it also can look like uh, what it really means is establishing yourself as somebody that they know, like, and trust because that's who people want to do business with. Now, the next step is to connect them with a lender. We happen to have a lender here. And so, Martin, come on back up. And what I want to ask you is what is it that you want agents to ask? Because one key thing is that we are not the lender. So I don't want to be saying, give me your financials. I don't want to be saying, give me your credit score. Give me, let me do a deep dive. I'm not doing that. I'm going to say, go talk to Martin. He'll do the dirty work. So Martin, what is it that you want us as agents to be preparing our clients for, asking our clients about? What is it? How, how can we help you? That's a great question. And thank you for asking that. So I think the biggest thing that we need to understand is what do lenders require when they're trying to get a buyer pre-qualified or pre-approved for a loan? So the basics are always income, assets, and credit. So before anybody does anything with their credit, we want to make sure that they're speaking with a lender to know, does the credit affect their ability to qualify or not? And are there things that need to be fixed to do the loan, because a lot of times buyers will think they need to fix their credit before they want to go out and purchase a home. And a lot of times buyers fixing their own credit may not be conducive to qualifying for a mortgage loan. So that's important to know as well. And then we also want to make sure that we have sufficient funds for a down payment and where the money is coming from. Is it coming from a gift? Is it coming from their employer? Is it coming from saving? Or is it coming from cash? in their mattress, which actually I was speaking with someone recently who had that situation and they didn't understand why they have to put their money in the bank because they didn't believe in the banking system. And I get that, but we're dealing with guidelines to put mortgage loans together and you have to do things in a certain way. And we do have to definitely verify where monies are coming from. So interesting that I had that conversation with somebody just last week. And then obviously too, with regard to employment, how long have they been on their jobs? Uh, do they have more than one job? Are they self-employed? Which creates another little thing that we have to contend with. But there are a lot of different things that we need to verify in order to determine what the buyer's qualifications may be. So to answer your question and asking, what should you ask of buyers? First and foremost, have you already spoken with a lender? Nine times out of 10, they may say yes, but you also want to make sure that they're speaking to a lender that one, you possibly know or have at least have access to. If they're going online or using out of state or out of uh, um, area lenders, that could become a challenge for a lot of buyers because we don't know to what degree they have been pre-approved for a loan or what information has actually been verified. So even if they've already spoken with somebody to best represent them, my opinion is to have them talk to your lender, would that be myself or anybody else that you utilize that you have a lot of knowledge and trust and confidence with in their abilities to be able to not only look out for your client's best interest, but to look out for your best interest as well, because you're representing that buyer. That's huge. Yeah. So uh, what? So basically what we're talking, what we're asking our clients is, have you been pre-approved with the lender or are you working with the lender? either one. And um, beyond that, should we be asking these questions about, you know, income? Do you have a down payment? Where is it coming from? Or do we leave that to you? Um, yes, on both. So yes, you can, if you have the comfort in being able to ask some of these questions, but not every realtor does, but you can always ask, how long have you been on your job? If they say, oh, we just started six months ago, just know that that can be a little bit of a challenge. How much money do you have for a down payment? Because a lot of buyers think they want to go look at homes. They can be in the mm -hmm. six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollar price range, and they've got five grand sitting in their bank account. So you do want to have just some of the basic knowledge of what they bring to the table. Are there any credit issues? Do you know what your credit scores may be? If you're comfortable in asking just some of the basics, I think that's okay because now you can get an idea in your mind as to what you're dealing with. And do I really want to spend my Saturday or Sunday showing five or six properties to somebody that has a 500 FICO score, 5,000 bucks in the bank, and they just started their job. 
Now, you can still be courteous to everybody in being able to say, you know what, I greatly appreciate your providing me with some of that information. I think this would be a great opportunity for us to get Martin involved, to be able to speak with you a little bit further, to just make sure of what your qualifications may be, so that way we can go out and show you the properties that you, you can actually qualify for. So that would be a way to turn that around, but at mm -hmm. least you have some basic understanding of what you're dealing with and who. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Thank you, Martin. We're good. We're good. Yay. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay. So, you know, one of the things that I like to, to do is I like to ask some of those questions, but it goes back to establishing that rapport. Have I established that rapport to be able to ask some of those questions about how much do you have for a down payment and uh, what's your credit score? Because if I just pick them up because it's an online lead or a cold call, I'm probably not going to be asking those questions. But if it's somebody that I've been nurturing, we've been talking, they understand that I am a professional and the, you know, the expert that they want to work with, then maybe I'm having that conversation. So it really just depends on my relationship with that person, like Martin said. And usually what I'm asking is not, uh, do you, or is not how much do you have a down payment? It's, it's, do you have a down payment? Usually they'll offer up that information. They'll offer up how much it is, but they'll either usually say yes, no, a little bit, some, what do you mean by a down payment? And then we can start, that's like a conversation starter. And it's a little bit less intrusive than if I'm saying, how much do you have for a down payment? Cause then that's like, Ooh, they want to know my exact dollar amount. Now, again, it depends on my relationship with them. If they're like my family, I'll be like, how much do you have in the bank? Pull up your bank account, let me look at it. <laughs> but if there's somebody I met online, I'm probably not doing that. So it's all, it all goes back to establishing that rapport. And then we want to talk about uh, scheduling that buyer's consultation. So um, once, so it's key to talk about the lender uh, because we want to know, are you paying cash? Have you talked to a lender? Are you pre-approved? Where are you in this process? And then based on whatever they say, we can say, great, I can connect you with the lender. And then we can schedule that buyer's consultation. So I always want to do that in the same phone call. I want to connect them with the, I want to see if I need to connect them with the lender. And I want to schedule that buyer's consultation. So whether or not they connect, they are connected with the lender, I'm still trying to schedule that buyer's consultation uh, because I want to make sure that I'm having the conversation with them wherever they're at. So if they are somebody who just started their job six months ago, they have five grand in the bank and they have a 500 FICO score. Great. Let's still talk. I still want to establish my relationship with you, but that's going to be a very different conversation. I'm not going to be talking about what kind of homes you want to look at. I'm going to be talking about where do we need to be to get you into a house in the next year or two. So I definitely always want to schedule that buyer's consultation. And you, you remember that you're coming from contribution here. You're providing value to them by giving them a free buyer's consultation. So um, you have to remember that so that you're not feeling like you're putting them out. You're providing a value. You're providing a service to them and something that is very valuable. So don't feel like you're putting them out by saying, you know, don't feel like, oh, I shouldn't be scheduling this buyer's consultation. It's, this is a, something of value to them. And then we want to become their trusted advisor for all things real estate. So that's one of the reasons why, even if they are totally not qualified, I still want to do a buyer's consultation because I want them to come to me for all things real estate. So a lot of times um, newer agents are working with people for rentals. And that's totally fine because again, I want people to come to me for all things real estate. So even if it is a rental, I want them to come to me because hopefully they'll turn into a buyer and hopefully they'll turn into a seller. We're in it for the long game. So if we're in it for the short game and we're saying, uh, you're a renter, no, I'm not going to work with you because I'm not going to get a paycheck this year. But if I'm in it for the long game, that same renter might turn into somebody who's a buyer, who's a seller, who refers me. And that one relationship that I've established where I've become their trusted advisor now turns into $150,000, $200,000 over the life of my relationship with them. So make sure that you're not brushing people off because they might not be uh, qualified in the way that you want them to be because eventually, hopefully they will be, especially if they're talking to you, they're talking to Martin, they get their finances in order to be able to buy and they have friends. Everybody has friends. And so if we are providing value to them, 
they're going to talk to their friends and they're going to say, this is the best agent I've ever worked with because not very many people do buyer's consultations. This is the reality of it. If you do a buyer's consultation, if you set that as the expectation of something you do for all of your clients, you are going to stand out because I would say 90% of agents do not do a buyer's consultation in the way that we're talking about. Hey guys, we're going to jump back into the workshop in just a second. But first, if you're getting value out of this, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button so that you get more videos just like this as soon as they come out. Don't forget to watch till the end for a special bonus. And one last thing before we jump back in, if you're interested in coaching and taking your business to the next level, we have a proven system that has worked with hundreds of agents to get them into production. We would love to help you. Schedule a call with me at the link below and let's connect. Now let's jump back into the workshop. So this is our buyer's questionnaire. This is um, what we're talking about is like in the beginning, you have this buyer's questionnaire where you're asking those basic questions. How many bedrooms? How many bathrooms? Who's going to be living with you? Have you talked to a lender? Are you paying cash? This is not the consultation. I want to point this out because so many people say, yeah, I do buyer's consultations. I talk to them and I say, how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms are you going to, do you need to sell your uh, house to be able to buy? Those are all great questions to ask, but that is not a consultation. What value are you bringing them from asking those questions? You're not, they're bringing you value. They're helping you to determine how you can help them. Sure. But this is not this is not a buyer's consultation. So still do this, still ask these questions, but keep that in mind. This is not a buyer's consultation. All right, now we're diving in. Let's talk about how to command your buyer's presentation. So let's create a buyer's presentation. So we're in command. As a reminder, your, da your dashboard might look different than mine. That's okay. Um, all of these widgets on the side are the same. If you click on this, button to this top button, all of these little icons pop out and it tells you what you're looking for. Now we're gonna go fast with this. So I recommend going back and watching this again and doing it with me as I do it. You can slow me down, you can <laughs> speed me up, whatever, but I'm not gonna um, go super slow with this because I want to make sure that we are doing this in half an hour. So, um, and we can do it in half an hour, by the way. So we're gonna start at designs down here. Martin, you're good to go back to work because okay. I think we're good. Thank you for coming, Martin. So real quick, I did want to ask. Yes. I did see some questions pop up. Yes. I didn't know if anybody had mortgage questions. I thought I saw a couple things that were there. So um, they were asking about uh, if you are able to work anywhere. And I said, yes, you're able to work anywhere in California. Yes. And then I put in your uh, email address. Okay, cool. All right. So thank you. My pleasure. Always. And Martin does classes every other week on mortgages. So um, email him and he will put you on his mailing list yes. to be able to get information about those. Cool. Right? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Enjoy. Bye. Pleasure, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Walter. And my recorded um, amazing workshops. Thank you, Michelle. <laughs> uh, they are, if you are not a PC agent, they are on my own personal uh, YouTube channel. You can find that at Brittany Hannon Real Estate. And so make sure to follow that and jump on and find that. Uh, you can find those. Usually I'm pretty slow. So it's like a week or two after I do them, but they're on there. I want to just point this out that um, you can see that I have a bunch of holiday things here. That is something that we are going to talk about in two or three weeks, how to schedule your social media posts through command. So just a little Easter egg for you. All right. So let's go up to create design. And then we're going to say print. Even if you email these out, which I do, I never print them. It's still, I'm going to find them in the print section. So then I said, okay. So let's see what happens here. Are you awake? Let's try that again. Print, continue. There we go. So remember, this takes us to a third party. And so if we do a lot in here, then we usually want to open up a whole new um, command page to get back to command because we're outside of command now. We're in this we brand. Okay, so this has all kinds of stuff. This is command designs and it has all kinds of templates for you. Let me close some of these out so we can see them. First and foremost, I'm gonna show you the easiest thing you can do is go to assets first 
If I click on assets, this is all my personal branding information. So I have colors and fonts. If you don't have that, you don't need it. It's fine. This is what you need, images. So I can put in um, professional photos. I can put in different things and then logos. So I have a logo for my own business, but then also my um, Keller Williams, my market center has logos. And so I have these all in this logo section. This is gonna be important and I'll show you why. So you add those in assets. It's super easy. You just go to upload and then add those in. So I'm gonna go back over here to templates and I'm gonna go down to the buyer and buyer presentations. Now, most of these buyer presentations that are gonna pop up have the same content. So you're really just looking for the one that you like the best. So let's use uh, this one and you can use whichever one you want because the content is pretty much the same. And once we pull this up, my wife must be very slow. You're gonna notice that over on the bottom, on the bottom right, it says 30 pages. That is way too many. We do not want 30 pages. If you have 30 pages of anything, I guarantee you're not reading. So, I mean, unless you're a super reader, which I actually am, I would not be reading a 30 page guide that my real estate agent sent me. So what we're gonna do is if I click on that, all of these 30 pages pops up, and what we're gonna do is basically go through and see, do I like those? Do I not? Let me delete some. So the first page is basically a title page that you can use or you can delete. The second page is an information page about this buyer consultation. I'm gonna delete this uh, because I don't need it. However, I would recommend that you read through it, see what it's saying, and then delete it. But you definitely wanna delete it before you send this to your clients. Now, usually for all of these, it has a second title page and usually there's a picture and that's usually the picture that I want to, or the page that I want to use. So I'm going to go back up to this first one and delete this because I don't want two of them. And I like the one with the picture on it better. So I want to delete it. Yes. So now we have this. Now here's just a key, a little pro tip for you is that I create these all to be um, standard buyer's consultations for everybody. They're not specific to a specific client. And so I'm going to change this and I'm just going to say buyer consultation or whatever you want it to say. Now you can see that it, now it's going over that picture and maybe I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to pull this to the side and it's going to change it for me. So all of this is just like design preference. You can play around with this and do whatever you want. I'm just going to show you some of the basics. So this says a custom consultation prepared with care for, and then I changed the, this to buyer consultation. So now I'm just gonna delete that. And I just press delete or backspace or whatever you have on your computer. So it just says buyer consultation. And for me, I say, great, that's fine, nice, clean, whatever. Now, when I click on this image, it's gonna take me to these images. And you can see that over here, these all say, um, upgrade to use. Can you see that it says upgrade to use? Well, if I go to workspace, these are all uh, licensed to Keller Williams and these are great pictures. So if we say this is a house exterior, so let's just do a house exterior. And I would say pick a house that is in, that is similar to your market center. So if you live in the city, you probably don't want a house that is, you know, like this three bed, you know, four bedroom, three bath, two story home. You want a house that is more like you want the look that's more city. Um, and so you can scroll down and find lots of different things. So you have like high rise buildings and townhouses, stuff like that. If you're in Palm Springs, maybe you want one with a pool. So basically we're just going to pick something. So I'm clicked on this right now, clicked on this image. And so when you hover over it, you can see that there's this little swap out button. I can just say replace image and it replaces it within the confines of that uh, picture. So if I go over here and do the opposite and just say um, add the image, it's gonna put it over everything. It's not gonna do it within the confines of the formatting. But if I click on it and I say, I want that one. Now you can see if I double click, it cuts it off to just be where this is formatted. So again, you can play with it. You can do whatever you want. Um, I'm not 
well, I'm not here to tell you about your design choices right now. Um, I just want to show you the basics. So similarly, if we click on this picture, this should be your picture. And remember, because we already did my assets in the images, I can click on that and there's my photo. So I can say replace image and there we go. Um, and then I can click on it and I can bring it down and I can make it bigger and I can do whatever I want. And it's still within the format of, oops, and then we say done. And it's still within the format of that little circle. So makes it super easy. Um, if I wanna click on this to say, obviously I don't want it to say compliments of first name, last name. Also, let's make this bigger because I'm blind, I can't see. I just click on this plus button and make it bigger. So compliments of first name, last name, I'm gonna go up here to the little typewriter and I'm gonna put in Brittany Cannon, save changes. Now, easy peasy, same thing for all of this information. Put in your website, your email address, your um, website, your phone number, all of that. Now, if you have a logo, you can put that in here. Now, one of the things that I do know about this is that this is, uh, this does not fit in the same way as what I'm telling you. Like you can't just replace the format. So for instance, I'm clicked on this, but it's not giving me an option to swap these out. So I'm gonna have to, oh wait, it is giving me that option. No, it didn't. So I just stuck it in there. Now I'm gonna delete this one and I'm gonna put this where I want it. So I'm gonna make it smaller. I want it basically to be about the same size as that. And this page thing is in my way, so I'm just gonna get it out of there. Now this Keller Williams logo, when I click on it, uh, it's gonna take me back to my logos. And so I'm just gonna swap it out. And there you see that it does swap it out based on the formatting. So we're good to go. And then this, uh, market center information, you can change that to your address, your market center's address, again, by going up to this typewriter. And then I'm going to put in uh, Keller Williams, West Ventura County, and 2741, I think, is the new address. Parkview Court, Oxnard, 93036. Okay. And it's done, you can see it's in there. All right, so I'm done with this page. Well, I'm not done with it because I didn't put that in, but you can go back and put that stuff in. Now let's click back on the pages and go to the next few pages. So the next page is the table of contents. Now, because I'm not having 30 pages in mine, I don't need a table of contents. So I'm gonna take this out. Delete that. Yes, we wanna delete it. Now the next few, I know this because I've done this a hundred times, the next few are gonna be uh, similar to each other. That's why there are 30 pages in this is because some of these pages are similar to each other. So this is basically saying, why is buying a house a good decision? Now the next page is talking about your needs come first. Well, so these are not actually similar, but basically I, I don't need to talk about this, they already, hopefully understand why it's a good decision. I don't need to have this in there. I'm just gonna delete it. Yes, delete. Now, here's your needs come first. So this is talking about now their wants and needs. So we've already talked a little bit about this. So I don't need 15 pages of their wants and needs. So you're gonna see the next page is build your preference profile. So this is like what we were talking about. Um, oh no, this is the basics of how to reach you. I don't need this as a page in here. So I'm going to delete this. Then now we have your home wish list. So one of the things that I do is you can see there's your home wish list. The next page is another your home wish list for the exterior. The next page is another your home wish list. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose my favorite, the look and feel of my favorite page. And then I'm just going to say, what's your new home wish list? And then I'm going to put in some prompting questions. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm prompting myself. And I'm going to say, we already talked about that you want a four bed, two bath pool because, you know, with a pool because you have kids and you want a back house for grandma and grandpa to live in. Is there anything else that you can think of? 
And then I'm going to say things, maybe prompting questions. We already talked about who's going to live here. Um, are there any non-negotiables? Some, some things like that. So I might change some of this content to say, um, like, I don't necessarily, okay, like, this is a good question. Do you have a preference for the year the house was built? Do you want a house move-in ready, or are you willing to do some work on it? Then we might talk about the way, the best way to get the best deal is to find an ugly house. So it's just a conversation starter to prompt us. So um, will you require accessibility options? So we already talked about grandma and grandpa moving in. Do we want to make it so that it's all single story? Do we want stairs, no stairs? How do we want that? So we don't necessarily need to have this question, but if it's a prompt, if, if it's a prompting question for you, you may want to leave that in. So I'm not going to make any changes on that, but basically what I want to do is I want to choose my favorite look and feel. So is it this one? This is basically an overview of your needs come first. I'm going to delete this one because this is saying, I'm going to find you your best house. Okay, great. Uh, do I want this one? Do I want this one? I think I like this one the best. So I'm going to delete the rest of these. Delete. Yes. So I'm gonna keep this one and then I'm just gonna change this. Instead of saying exterior, I'm just gonna say something like, what do you want in your home? What's, what are the non-negotiables? And then I'm gonna change these again to be prompting questions for myself. So I'm gonna leave it as is for now. You guys can go and edit that um, on your own. I, I don't want to have all of this nonsense in here. This is just a lot for me to look at. So I don't wanna have it in here. So delete. You can see how we're just quickly making this smaller and smaller. It's no longer 30 pages. Neighborhood preference. I don't have anything like this in here because you have to watch out for redlining and for, you know, steering. steering. You don't want to be, you don't want to talk about that necessarily. Now, there is a way to talk about it where you're not doing that, but we're already going to be having this conversation. I don't want a full page about this in here. So I'm going to take this page off because that is definitely up to you. You can have it if you want it in there, getting to know the neighborhood. Again, I'm going to take this out because this is, I'm not doing something that is specific to uh, each individual client. I'm doing it generalized. Map, map your move. When's the best time to buy? No, I don't. I don't want that page in there. Now, if you guys go in here and you say, actually, I really do like some of these things. Great. Add it in. It's yours to, to do what you want. Neighborhood insights. Again, this is specific to this family. So I'm not going to have this in here. Now, this may be something uh, that I send them separately that's specific to their neighborhood. If they want a very specific neighborhood, then I'm going to say, here's a neighborhood snapshot. Here are how many houses that are uh, for sale right now. Right now, here's the average sale price, all of that kind of thing. I might send them that separately, but that's not going to be in my buyer consultation. Because as you'll see, I want to make sure that I have a buyer consultation prepped and ready to go so that I can just send it directly and not have to worry about it. Um, how home buying works. Now, this is where I think this is super, super valuable for you as an agent and for your client. So this basically outlines the process of how the home buying, uh, how home buying works. Partnering with an agent, get pre-approved. When I am meeting with somebody, so... I am like pretty tech savvy. So I don't have um, hard copies of any of this usually. I bring an iPad or I bring my computer or whatever. I also send this either before or after or both for them to take a look at um, so that they can come with any questions. And so I'm not going over every little jot and tittle of this. I am just saying, okay, partnering with an agent, you're already working with me, check that off the box, you're good to go. I'm not going over every, absorb their local insight, get to know the neighborhood inventory, all of that kind of stuff, but I am leaving it on here so that for somebody who wants to actually know some of this stuff, they can go on here and take a look and read it after I'm gone. Get pre-approved for a loan. This is where we're going to say, you know, if they're a cash buyer, I can say, oh, get pre-approved for a loan. You're a cash buyer. We don't have to worry about that. Cross this off. Moving on. So even if they're a cash buyer and this is heavily geared toward somebody who's getting a loan, you don't have to worry about that. that this is okay. You can, it's, it's meant as a conversation starter and to tailor your approach. 
finding your new home, this is where you can talk about putting them on a search, uh, make your offer and negotiate the best terms. You can talk about, this is where I shine. This is where I'm going to do the work for you. Or we can talk about putting in your highest offer. And this is also where you can talk about the market and where the market um, is headed and where the market has been and how it's shifting and where they're, what they're going to experience. Because you're going to be able to say, it's going to take a while. You may not get your first offer that you put in. And we want to make sure to put in your strongest offer. We want to make sure that we're only seeing houses that you do qualify for. And we want to make sure that you can be competitive. So um, again, like some of these things in here, choose a title company. You can let them know if they have questions about that. You can let them know. Usually with choosing a title company, either I can choose it for you or the seller is is typically the one who chooses that. So you don't have to change all of this. You just have to let them know this, this doesn't affect you or this is what I do for you. So like deliver escrow checks. This is, we can say deliver the escrow check. You can say wire in earnest money deposit. So you can change this um, by going and doing the typewriter. And then instead of deliver escrow check, wire in Actually, we should call it initial deposit because that's what it says on the RPA. Oops, spelled that wrong. Initial deposit. Initial. Save. Okay, so one thing to keep in mind is that uh, these little dots are each individually able to be moved. So if you are good at this stuff, you can adjust it. I am pretty good at this stuff and I don't like to adjust it. So just keep that in mind, try and make it so that you're not adjusting this part of it because it is kind of a pain, but you can do it. All right, so the next few pages are gonna continue being about the process. I just wanna make sure, the, the reason I say that this is super helpful for agents and clients is because you can go through and say, oh, that's what happens when you're under contract. That's what happens when we're negotiating offers. It helps you to understand that even as a brand new agent, it kind of gives you um, a step-by-step. -step. So, um, but you also want to take a look because in some of these, let's see, there is one that talks about, uh, let's see, I don't know. You just want to make sure because one of them says something about going to an attorney. We don't do that in California. They do that in a lot of other places. So you might want to change that kind of stuff. But um You just want to read through this to make sure that this is all accurate. Stay in touch with your agent for current or future recommendations in regard to your new house. Great. That's all going to be something that I want to keep in there. All right. And then the next things are going to be talking about do's and don'ts for financing. Um, and so you can leave this in here. I don't want to have me as the agent. Remember, we stay in our lanes. So I don't want to have a lot of information about financing, I want to say this is where you go and talk to Martin. This is where we talk to our lender. Uh, you have cash, you're paying in cash, so we don't need to worry about this. But the do's and don'ts here are actually really helpful. It talks about like, don't go out and finance a brand new car before you buy a house. Don't go finance a couch before you buy a house. So <laughs> I do like to keep this in here. Now, this is starting to talk about you and the value that you bring. So personally, I like to have a testimonials page and then a like page about here's my bio. I don't want, I don't need to have all of this information in here and you can. So all of these numbers, if you don't have these numbers, go to your market center and get these numbers. Use your market center's numbers. Now, this will be something where you would want to keep this up to date or you can say last year, these were, you know, the numbers that we had in the area or something like that so that you don't have to keep coming in here and changing it. But this is totally up to you. If you want to keep it in, great. If you don't, keep it moving. Um, my competitive advantage, same kind of thing. Is it, this, I would say these two pages are basically the same. So I'm going to just delete one of them. And then your trusted partner. This is where I would put in my bio, maybe um, something like that. Here is a testimonials page. If you don't have any testimonials, delete the page. Nobody's going to say, excuse me, where's your testimonials page? I don't see it in here. Um, a promise to you, this I think is fine to add in and you don't need it. So I'm going to delete it because we still want to narrow this down. A promise to the community. If you're an agent who's who, that's your unfair advantage is that you are heavily 
entrenched in the community, this is a great page to have. If not, delete it. Okay, so you can go through, I wanna make sure that I get through this. So you can go through searching safely. This is COVID stuff. I'm gonna delete this. Um, and again, if you're an agent who values that and that is something very important to you, leave it in. Bottom line, again, another page that like we've, we've gone through this, we get the bottom line. Um, having an app, you can definitely keep this page or you can just talk about your app. And then commonly used terms. This is actually something that I do like. Um, so I do leave this in the commonly used terms because there are some people who are going to find that very valuable. Um, and so you want to leave that in for people like that. And then here's how you can get in touch. So you can change all of this. You can add your photo here. You can change your logo. We already talked about how to do that. And then now we're down to 11 pages. And I probably would, I probably didn't even take out as many pages as I actually would have. I would be down to probably nine or 10. But uh, we were able to do that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to download it. Actually, okay, yeah. So we're going to download it. Once you obviously edit all of this, we want to download it. And then once we have it downloaded, we have it as a PDF. And this is what you can actually scroll through if you're on an iPad or on your computer. When you're in a buyer's consultation, you can actually scroll through. Now, keep in mind that this buyer's consultation is meant to be a conversation starter. It's not meant to read every single line of this. It's meant to be a conversation starter, and it's meant to be something that you can also send to your clients after the fact or before the fact so that they can look through. Because remember, not everybody is the same. Not everybody is going to connect with conversation and relationship and all that kind of stuff. Some people need numbers. Some people want to see like, what are the cold hard facts? And so this is something I can send them with numbers. This is something I can send them with evidence that what I say is true because I'm connected with a company who has this much in volume or whatever. Some people like that. Some people want to see that. So it's important to have both in my opinion. Um, and this helps keep you on track. It's basically like slides to help you keep, stay on track. Now this is taking forever to download. It doesn't really matter. My point here is that you can take the PDF and then send it uh, in an email before or after your consultation. All right, so we did that. And really now you have a buyer's consultation. You just have to change a few different things. Let me stop and take a look at the chat real quick. Okay, I lost the chat, here it is. Uh, because I want to make sure that I'm answering pay, uh, questions. Can you save each page as you go? Yes, and you absolutely should be. You're not necessarily saving each page. You're just saving your progress. Um, as a new agent, you can use your market center's total clients uh, or best to just delete if you are a brand new agent. Either way, if you're a brand new agent, a seasoned agent, you can use your market center's numbers um, and you can delete that whole page if you don't want to use it. It has nothing to do with new agent veteran agent, seasoned agent, you use it in how you want to use it. Um, and I think, okay, great. So last thing I wanna show you because I think it's super, super, super valuable is I wanna jump into the checklists. Now I've, I've mentioned this before, but, uh, oops, this is not the right thing, hold on. This is the right thing. All right, so if we go, once I say done, it's going to save everything. It does auto save, so you don't have to do that, but I don't trust auto save. I, I want to make sure I'm doing it. Um, okay, so if we go into opportunities, we want to go in, we want to talk about checklists. So we have, um, let's go into, let's say the appointment, thing. actually let's go into the active stage. And I want to go to edit stages. Once we're in edit stages, you can see that we have all these checklist items. Now yours are going to say zero out of zero if you haven't done any yet. Uh, but I want to make sure you are doing this and taking advantage of it because it's so, so, so helpful. So you can see that if I clicked on that, um, it, when we are in the active and showing part of our transaction, there is a checklist to say run comps for property. So this is reminding me that I need to run comps for the property. This is prepare offer and review with buyer. 
This is showing me that I need to do these things and I can check them off as I go. Then when I go to the next one, when we're in the negotiation stage, confirm the agent has received the offer. This is something that is imperative. You have to make sure that you confirm that the agent received it because especially if you're one of 50 offers, you wanna make sure it hasn't gone to their spam or their junk mail. And then once it's accepted, you want to tell your client to prepare um, their earnest money for wire transfer or whatever. This is um, a client update. You can see that it has a little email uh, or envelope next to it. And so basically once I click uh, send it to them, it'll automatically send them an update, an email update that'll say prepare your earnest money, blah, blah, whatever. Put yourself on this first so you can see what this looks like and you have to make sure that you have checked the box for client updates. Either way, whether it's a client update or not, this is a reminder sent to you to say, okay, I need to remind my clients to prepare their earnest money. Checklists are a great way to make sure you're not missing anything. So you want to make sure that you have the checklist um, intact and up to date. So what you wanna do is if you wanna change, nope. If you go to your checklist, you can add an item here. This adds it and changes it to everybody. If you want to go to your checklist, let's see, I think I have a sample Mickey Mouse here. I do not, I must've taken them off. Well, if we wanna go in and change each individual, then we can just go in here and I can say, add an item just to this individual transaction. So if I say, um, this is a cash offer and I don't need to, follow up with the lender, then I can just make a note to say, follow up with the, the buyer to transfer all their funds or get them ready for transfer or whatever I wanted to do. I can add it to the individual transaction. These checklists are so key in running your business. Um, and once you're under contract, let's go to under contract and back to edit stages over here. You can see now I have more um, email buyer, email the buyer to congratulate. Send the executed offer to my TC. Confirm the appraisal has been ordered with the lender. So I have a bunch of, of checklists on here that I want to make sure this stuff is happening. Remove the buyer from the MLS strip campaign. All these things that I might not remember on my own, um, I want to make sure that these are in here so that I can get, so that I'm not missing any details. Confirm the earnest money has been deposited. All of these things you're probably going to get from escrow or from your TC or whatever, but I want to make sure that it's on my checklist to do so that I'm not dropping the ball. Um, that is what I wanted to tell you about uh, checklists, and we're not obviously diving into it. We are going to be diving into these checklists in the net in a few weeks or so, so stay tuned for that because checklists are super, super, super helpful. Okay, so now let's just run through this, create checklists and command. We talked about that already, creating our buyer's presentation. We talked about our checklist, so we're good there. All right, follow your checklist on all of your transactions. And now what is important now? Practice. Don't practice on your clients. Do not practice on your clients. Brain surgeons do not practice on their patients. We do not want to practice on our clients. Now, I know we're not brain surgeons, but we still do not want to be practicing on our clients. Role play and know your talk tracks. This is a really, really good format to use to make sure that you are not missing anything, that you're remembering everything. Even I, I could probably do this in my sleep. I still pull this up for every single person I'm working with. Why? because it also shows my expertise. It shows my professionalism. I'm not just going there and being like, hey, so we're, you wanna buy a house? Cool, let's go and have some fun and look at some houses. No, I'm, I'm providing value to them. And so I wanna make sure that I am using this and you want to make sure that you're using it too, but you need to practice. One of the things that practice gives you is confidence. And you wanna go into a buyer's consultation with confidence Otherwise, nobody's going to trust you with the sale of their home. Nobody's going to trust you with perhaps buying the largest asset that they're going to own in a lifetime. All right, what's important now? Practice, practice, create saving a saved search on your MLS. A lot of agents don't know how to do this. Create a saved search, make your life easier. Lots of brand new agents will come to me and say, oh, yes, I have one client and I'm looking up 
houses every day. I'm on the hot sheets and I'm like, that is great. You're not going to be able to do that when you have 50 clients, when you have 150 clients, you have got to systematize. One of the ways to do that is create a safe search on your MLS. Every MLS is different. We don't teach to how to do this, but every MLS has some sort of a safe search feature. Figure out how to do that. Watch some videos and practice doing that. Practice, practice, practice. Create a buyer presentation today. If you don't have one, go back to what we just did and create it right now. It's super easy. That just took us less than half an hour to do that. You just need to go in and edit some of the things you want to change. In less than an hour, you could have it. So create it today and review it in the mirror, on your camera phone, with, you know, record it for yourself, do it with a friend, a family member, whatever. If you practice these, you will get clients. If you practice these with other people, you will get clients because your people are going to say, oh, they're actually in business. They're actually trying to improve. They're actually doing these things that's going to make a difference. So make sure that you're practicing with people. That's one of the things that I challenge you with today is create your buyer's presentation. Number one, get it done. Number two, call up 10 people and say, hey, I want to, I have a buyer's presentation that I'm going to use. I want to try and practice with you. Can we do that? Can we practice together? And I will tell you that you will get business out of that because at the end you can say, so who do you know wants to buy or sell? Joking around with it. You can say this and people will say, oh, you know what? I don't know, but I'll keep you in mind. Even if you're practicing, even if you're joking around about it, but make sure that you're practicing, have this be something that you can talk to that you're showing people that you're working. All right. And, and your, uh, your bonus, my favorite resources, Millionaire Real Estate Agent by Gary Keller. If you guys haven't read this, the Red Book, MREA, we talk about this a lot, but this is um, the blueprint for how to become a rock star agent. And one of the things that they talk about is from now until forevermore, you are practicing, <laughs> you're role-playing, you're doing these things that we're talking about here. Um, command checklists. I talk about, I, we just talked about it for a short minute, but this is honestly actually something that I use religiously when I'm in a transaction. So don't sleep on these command checklists. Zoom. I'm, I bring up Zoom because a lot of agents don't, a lot of agents underutilize it. I use Zoom for all of my buyer consultations because I'm able to share my screen just like I did. And then I'm able to um, go through it and read basically, I mean, I told you we're not reading through it, but we're using it as a prompt. Um, and I'm sh sharing my screen and reading through it with my clients. So it's definitely underutilized. A lot of people want to meet in person and I think, great, meet in person if you can. But always have that as an option for your clients because a lot of people these days are preferring Zoom. I just did a buyer consultation with a really, really good friend over Zoom because she was like, oh, I want to do it today. So let's do it at 530. And I was like, okay, we can do it over Zoom. I had offered her to go out to dinner and she was like, how about Zoom? So <laughs> make sure that you're using Zoom. Even the free Zoom. The free Zoom is great because you're limited to 40 minutes. And so if that time... At 30 minutes, it says, hey, in 10 minutes, you're going to be kicked off. Great. You tell them, I only have 10 minutes. Let's finish this up. And then Canva. I use Canva for all kinds of stuff. Um, and if you find that there's a better buyer consultation, that there's something better in Canva to use, use it. There's nobody saying you have to use command um, designs. But what I am saying is it's there. It's ready for you. It's ready to go. So don't have nothing. All right. And then next week we are talking about your listing presentation. We're doing the same thing, but talking about listing presentation. So make sure to join us next week. And if you're not in coaching, you want to learn more, reach out to me. I would be happy to help. Well, I hope that helped. That was just a little sneak peek of our weekly workshops. Remember, you can join us live in our weekly workshops every Monday at 1130 a.m. Pacific Standard Time where you can ask any questions you have and be there in real time. Click the link below to register for the next workshop. And if you wanna dig deeper and grow your real estate business, click the link below and let's schedule a call to talk about coaching. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you get more videos just like this as soon as they come out and we'll see you in the next video.